lift your hands up and worship him. Just wave your hand to him. Who is worthy? Who is worthy? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Tell him thank you. Let him hear the voice of praise. Let him hear the sacrifice of praise from your lips. Lift up your voice and tell him thank you. Thank you, our wonderful choir. God bless you. I wish you on the, occupy the front seat. The front row is empty. I wish some of you should occupy the very front row. Give God praise. Worship him. Exalt him that lives forever. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. He is God. He is faithful. Thank you, Father. You are worthy. At the mention of your name, every knee bows. Our gathering is in your name. I command every voice to be silent. Let only the voice of God be heard. Father, we say thank you. We have confidence in you. Our gathering is unto you. Do for us what man cannot do for us. Let your word do, so, do us good today. Father, bless us with your word. Baba, confirm your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Go to clap on free and have your seats. I want to listen very carefully because I believe God's word today it be a blessing to somebody either in this hall of meeting or through the internet. This morning I trembled greatly when the Lord was speaking to me or meditating to me and I was busy writing. I'll be speaking on living by faith on, the in, on God's integrity. Living by faith on the integrity of God. We are living in a time that people are giving up on themselves, getting discouraged economically, spiritually, maritally. Every area looks as if nothing is working. Insecurity is everywhere. You go to the hospital, so many people are sick, mortuary is filled up, all kinds of things. Each time you turn to social media, you hear all kinds of terrible news. People being slaughtered by bandits, by terrorists. All you hear everywhere. Nations, people being buried in large number. You can people cannot meet up. Hardship, frustration. People feel like giving up. It was so in the time of Peter and Jesus Christ. And one day, Jesus was teaching some very hard things. And many people could not follow anymore. They got discouraged. And Jesus said to Peter and Co, will you also go away? He said, to where, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. We need the word of eternal life to hold on and to live victoriously in the midst of a confused world. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. Hold on to his integrity. When a man makes a promise to you and say, whenever you need something, just send me a test. I will send it into your account. And the first thing that comes to your mind is the man's integrity. Is that not so? This man that is saying it, will he keep his promise? If you find that this man is a man of integrity, you begin to jubilate. Is that not so? He has not done anything, no. You start rejoicing. Say, that man, ah, if he promised you, he will do it because he's a man of integrity. But we are looking at holding on to the integrity of God at this time. Looking on to his integrity. And integrity of a man shows through his character. Does he have character? 
Does he say what he says he will do, that he will do it? Looking at his world. I want to look at a few scriptures that are very familiar. Then we're going to application things the Lord was teaching me this morning. If you look at the word of God in Psalm 89, Psalm 89, verse 33 and verse 34. Psalm 89. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take away from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor utter the thing that is gone out of my lips. A man of integrity, God himself speaking, said no matter what happens, even if David kept the promise, the covenant, and his children could not keep it. I will be faithful. I will not change because of their unfaithfulness. No matter what happens, my loving kindness, because of my integrity, I will not fail. My covenant with David I will not break. Neither will I change what I say from my mouth. That is a man of integrity. Maybe I'll say integrity. That is God. The things I have said. And that is applicable to every word of God. As we heard on Sunday, God said, Man ought to to live by every word of God. Whenever God speaks, He speaks from integrity. You can trust Him. You can depend on Him. If you look at Isaiah chapter 49, may we turn there quickly. Isaiah chapter 49. I read from verse 14. Shall look at it from 13, 15, and 16. Say, but Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. And the Lord asks, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea. They may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have grieved thee in the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. There came a time because Israel were falling and rising. People said, ah, God has forgotten them because of the kind of behavior. And God said, I am not faithful because of your faithfulness. Listen very carefully. For the fact that you woke up this morning and you are hale and healthy is not because you are good. It's not because you are righteous. God is always doing that because of his nature, his character. When he promised to watch over you, he does that faithfully said to them I cannot forget you how can I forget you and he came down to human level said can a woman forget her suckling baby he just gave birth to a baby within the first few weeks she carried away by something else and baby is even hungry people say ah madam have uh, you given salt to your baby today? Say, hey, I forgot. Where is my baby? It will never happen. Because of her tender heart. The Bible says, even if a woman chooses to forget, which is very hard, God said, I, the Lord, I will not forget you. When you have become his own, said, I have carved you in the palm of my hand. With your hands, say thank you, Jesus. That is his word. 
is concerned about all that bothers you. All. All, not some. Marriage, build house, prayer life, everything. All that concerns you. Even if it's a matter that is far away, you are bothered by what happened in Ukraine and Russia. Because of that, God is concerned about it. That is God's word. We can depend on him and hold on. When the storms of life are raging, we will not go to the mountain. We hold on to him. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. There may be no rain, there may be no, but we know that God cannot fail. We may not even understand what is happening. I passed through some storms in life. The unexpected happened to us as a family. And I said to my wife, we don't understand why it happened. But even in your, our tears, we shall make sure we don't offend God. For we know he is faithful. And we know that even this darkness we see shall work out for our good. Hold on to him and praise him. If you don't know what to say, keep quiet and praise him. For along the line, he will show up. And he is always right. And he's always on time. Wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Don't give up. Many people give up. Say, this thing will not work. They give up. Have example, people wanting to give up. The leper general, that's in the exam. First king, that's second kings. Naaman, he was asked to go and dip himself in the water. How many times? Seven times. He dip it. He dip it. He dip it. Said at least as I'm dipping it, it should be clearing small, small. But the one I have dipped so far, there is no sign to show that I have done something. He said, No, I will not dip again. Thank God for one of the servant. He said, Oh God, oh God, general, we have come all the way, and here you are. To have deep yourself. Have you compared it seven times? Why not just complete it? And the man was fuming. If I deep it seven times and nothing happened, I will burn down the whole place. You know, so your man. He deep it five times, six times. There was no sign. <laughs> but he had to complete it seven times. And the Bible says his skin turned out a lot of a newborn baby. God's word. But if he has given up, by the six times, say, I'm not doing it again. You on your own. There are men and women who refuse to give up. Read of the woman of the issue of blood. Bible says she has gone to several places. Prophets. She wasted all her hard earning and she find no solution. Some of you have done the same. Rather her case getting better, it became worse. Then she heard that Jesus is coming. Bible said, he said, this one, I will go. And when I go there, I will not tell my story. All I need to do is to touch the hem of his garment. I know if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Holding on to the integrity. She believed the integrity of Jesus. And if he says, I will heal you, I will heal you. Say, I will play my part. I've shared with us also a lady who was terribly bleeding. It's a terrible issue. Her bleeding period was not jamming the other period. She was bleeding unto death. She was packing her load to go back to her home in the east to go and die. She arranged her load. While she was packing her load, some of our members were sharing flyer for the all night. Go to her and say, Ah, mama, come to church today. We're having all night. He said, My daughter, see me packing. He said, I'm going home. To do what? To go home and die. Why? 
Say, if I die in worry, my town people it become a problem. They're looking for money to charter vehicle. But if I go now, it will be cheaper. Say, why not just come this night? You can travel tomorrow then. He said, okay. Say, but uh, this matter, I don't work out. He said, man, we know. She came. There was no room for individual counseling. It was an all night. And the meeting was going on. The Lord dropped in my heart to just preach an old testimony now. To pray for those who are sick. Say, if you are sick, come to the altar. And I prayed the general prayer. And I just told them, say, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed. She, I didn't even know she was her specialist. Everybody was touched. I didn't know she was watching herself. When she was touched, something happened to her. We didn't know. Go to her testimony. Said she went to the washroom, removed the wrappers that were soaked. She wear three wrappers. Not pad now. Wrapper. She will put around the first one, second one, third one. Before she will wear her dress. She will look like a, a huge woman. This woman get body open a cloth to cover up. Whatever cloth has covered up today, God will reach them in the name of Jesus. That amen can be better. Shout a believing amen. That pain and sorrow that have been covered up. Not just to, to protect your marriage or your children. The Lord will today take care of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Those struggles that have no endless result. God will step in today in the name of Jesus. Say another amen by faith. She went and removed all the wrapper. Nobody, we didn't know. Washed them and wore them. Meeting was the own. She came to the meeting. After staying for another one hour or two, she went back to the washroom. She removed everything. There was no single fresh blood. And she didn't know what to do. She began to dance and praise God. She began to dance and praise God. She was praising God. She was praising God. When the meeting closed, the woman who came with her was looking for her. She said, Let me share the company. Maybe she has gone to eat herself. He heard somebody was singing and dancing inside her left. He heard her voice. Ah, what are you doing there? Say, come and see, come and see. He said, after the man of God touched me, I came to check myself. I came back after two hours and waiting for a drop of blood. And blood did not drop again. The testimony is that said she rather she was, they came all the way from Iyara side, that part of worry. She put on the clothes. She for, they, she was praising God, go to the road. She forgot to enter transport. She sang from airport road to Iyara. She did not go home again to die. She remained in worry and lived. God will change your story today. Oh, I wish somebody had. God will change your story today. Because of the integrity of his name, he will change your story today. Somebody say another amen. Does not matter how long doesn't matter where you are. Don't give up. Your help is nearer than you think. Men may have said no hope. When I pray for people, I like cases that say, doctor said, what the doctor say, say this one, no hope. I like that very well. Because man have come to the end is where God shows up. God will show up today in the mighty name of Jesus. Holding on to the integrity of his word. We have reason to hold on. God will never give up on a man. Man by nature is sinful. Listen very well. And God says, come to me as you are. They say, miss up. People want to come to God by their righteousness. When you try, put, put aside the bad, bad behavior. Don't smoke again. Don't fornicate again. Uh, make sure you don't talk anyhow. Check the mirror dress well. Make sure your dress is long. Uh -huh. These are man's, man's approach. Look at what happened in the book of Genesis. When man sinned, did God know that man sinned? Yes. And God came down from his throne to come and meet them. He said, Adam, where are thou? I asked myself, 
These people have disobeyed you. They have sinned against you. What are you looking for them for? If it was a man, you say, yes, Adam. Yes, I have been watching you. I know you will fail and you have failed. And now because you have done this, this is your punishment. God was not looking for them to join them. God was looking for them to help them. Out of their sinful nature and, for, and weakness. He said, don't worry. Now it is trying to reach me by your effort. He said, he gave them a promise that the seed of the woman will share his blood for you and you will be delivered. And not by your power anymore, but by my mercy. Amen. Jesus was teaching the same thing about the story of the prodigal son. Remember that story very well. Don't you are familiar with the word of God? The son misbehaved, took his portion and went away and lavished it and wasted everything. And when he finished, he didn't know what to do. He was eating with the swine, with the pig. Then he came to himself. That means God was walking in him. He said, ah! How many servants in my father's house who have better things to eat? He said, I will arise. I will go to my father. He was rehearsing it. But how do I face my father? If I said, take me back as a son, I'm sure he will not take me back. Let me go as an applicant looking for a servant's job. And the Bible says, listen very carefully, why this young man was still far away trying to summon up courage, said, that is our house, my father's house. I got my own, not in the game. Hey, how do I? From afar, the father saw him first. And the father ran. And before the boy could explain himself, the father embraced him and told his servant, put a ring around his neck, a mark of royalty. Change his clothes. Give him a bag. Cap, bab his hair. And the father said, my son, let that be a feast. Kill the father's cow. My son that was missing has been found. It is God looking for a sinner. The integrity of God in this matter is that why men try to reach God, God say, no, 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 no. That's why Christianity is different from any other religion. A religion, they are making effort to reach God. But God is saying, I'm the one looking for you. Don't pretend, don't even try to change just come as you are. You sleep with men every night. Oh, come. Any hit. You are a witch. Just come. And as you come as you are, just submit yourself to me. I will make a turn. And I will change you. And I will bless you. That is integrity. A part of integrity of God. Somebody say amen. Say amen. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16 It says for God so loved the world He loved us while we were yet sinners Not because we say while we were yet sinners Jesus Christ did what? Died for us Did not die for us because we are trying to change No, 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 no He said our sin you are, you are killing human beings. You are drinking human beings' blood. God is saying, I love you. Just come as you are. That is the integrity of God. We talk about righteousness. I come to God. If you come to God, you must be holy. And when you are holy, because God is holy. But well, listen to this. The same God said to us in the book of Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, that all our righteousness put together is like what? Filthy rag. Which means, if you want to come to God to be holy, you don't need to depend on your own righteousness. This is a serious matter. When I became a Christian at a tender age, I became born again for two years I was praying to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I was taught Holy Spirit is holy. 
if you have any sin in your life, it won't come near you. I will be praying. I even fasted. I prayed. Bad thought will come to my mind. He said, you are disqualified. You say, you can't get him now because he's a holy spirit. I'll begin all, in, all, in, all, in, all over. And you know, the human mind is, can go here and there. I was too small to fornicate. And just now, just now, I'm confessing one sin or the other. He said, but uh -uh, which means this holy spirit? Forget it too. For two years, I was praying in ignorance, trying to have my own righteousness to be qualified to receive the Holy Spirit. Listen very well. Some of you have been taught the same thing. You are still struggling by your own righteousness. But later I realized that it is not my righteousness that qualifies me to be filled. It is His righteousness. And how do I receive his righteousness? Bible says, Abraham believed God, and God counted it to him as what? Righteousness. And he imputed it to him. Which means, if I want to be righteous and have God's righteousness, is to believe the word of God. That say, I'm a sinner. Is to believe the word. Something will happen today. God will change somebody today. It's not by my trying. You know this anger now. I'm trying to overcome it. No. Come to God with your anger. With your weak nature. And say Lord my righteousness. No matter how. Is worthless nothing. But I need your righteousness. I believe your word that says. Jesus shed his blood. To make me holy. And I'm cleansed by his blood. When I believe it. I receive my cleansing. And I have become what? Righteous. That's why in James chapter 2 verse 23. It says Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him. For righteousness. And he was called. The friend of God. James chapter 2 verse 23. Listen very carefully. This may interest you. We encourage every believer to pray. Is that not so? Say you are prayerless, you know you can't pray, you can't get anything, you must be up and down in praying. But I realize that if we rely on our own prayer ability, we are nowhere. That's why it's supposed to say, Jesus, teach us to pray because they try to do the things, not walking. Teach us how to pray. We don't know how to pray this prayer. You pray, that is result. Our own, oh, no get hey, no get hey. Thank God for the revelation that Paul had in Romans chapter 8, verse 20, 20, 26. Said, We do not know how to pray, but in the place of prayer, the Holy Spirit helps us, and we pray with groanings that cannot be uttered. Which means, if I want to pray, I say, God, teach me to do what? To pray. Give me the grace to pray. Give me the spirit of prayer. If you rely on your own, it's just empty exercise. If you are getting something, wave your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. And we are told also that faith is the base. Without faith, you can't receive anything from God. That is the word of God. Faith is so important. God is not even expecting you again. Listen very carefully. This is interesting. God is not expecting you to rely on your own faith. No. God is saying to us, I will give you faith to believe. And even the faith I'll give to you, if you can grab as small as mustard seed, you are qualified to receive any miracle. Then how do God give me faith now? All I need to do is to do what? To listen to his word. As I listen to his word, you say this word, God's word is true. Jesus died for me. I believe it. Did he die for you? Do you believe it? Your believing has not qualified you. God can do all things. Do you believe it? It's as his word comes and you accept his word and believe his word. By so doing, you now have faith. And that faith qualifies you for any miracle. Jesus Christ said, if thou can believe and not doubt, you will say to this mountain, be thou 
removed. Be thou cast out, and it shall be done for you what you have asked. Even the faith is not what I had, it's not my own. It's so interesting. Maybe lastly, or one only last, is the issue of giving. Listen very carefully. When God wants you to give, listen. Anytime there is opportunity to give, God does not want you to give him your own. He only wants to give you to give to him out of the abundance that he has given to you. It's like a child, you call the child, come and take biscuits. You get the child a packet of biscuits. Say, help me open, open it for the child. And you say to the child, give me biscuits. You expect three behavior. It's some children will take it to the back. Say, I will not give you. Say, but ah, Junior, I gave you biscuit now. Give me one. If you look at him, you say, no. We'll run away. That can be an attitude. Some will just look at it and pinch one like a small like granite seed and give to you rather than give you one. Say, give me more now. You say, no, it will finish. And that child could be when you give to the child, you say, give me. The child takes the whole biscuit and give it to you and step back. Say, oh, Junior, you are a very good boy. Say, follow me. You go and give the child three more other ones. Because he has learned how to do what? How to give. What, was he having biscuit before? No. It is the biscuit you gave to him, you asked him to give you from. In the same way, when he comes to give him, in the church anywhere if God says it is time for offering it is time for time it is time to support God's work all that God is saying I have given to you out of what I have given to you willingly bring some and as you are bringing some note that the measure by which you are bringing is the measure I will replenish you back if you add of the all I gave to you, the measure you are given is 50, 50 naira. When I'm going to replenish you, I replenish you with what? 50 naira blessing. Are you following? Look at Exodus 35. Exodus 35. That was the first major given in the scriptures. And the Lord said to Moses, Want to build this? It tell the children of Israel to come together. Let them give for the building of the tabernacle. That is the only place I find in the Bible that they so gave that it was too much material and money that Moses had to go back and say, "Please, your offering is too much. Is too much. Please stop. We beg you. We beg you. We beg you. Don't give again." Where they were in the wilderness, where did they get money? It's what God gave to them. From where? From their neighbors in Genesis chapter 3, when they were in the, sorry, in the Exodus chapter 3, when they were in Egypt. The Lord said to them, Now that you are about to go, you and your generation have served the Egyptians for generations. Your father, your great grandfather served them. Now, not because they were wicked, they didn't pay you. Go and receive the gratuity and the salary and the allowance and the overtime. Receive them from all of them. And when you go, you ask, say, go and exploit, go and go and take from them. And Bible says that they exploited. And they say, Hey, madam, bring out your boss, give me all the best clothes, bring out your jewelry. I want all the best. Bring out your silver. I want all the best. You say, yes, yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. They were only paying for the service that the Jews rendered to their fathers and grandfathers. Wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. God was the one giving to them. Why was God asking them? Because by the integrity of God, God will not ask you to give to him when he has no first given to you. God knew along the line he will ask them to give. And when it was time to give, 
they remember that the silver and the gold and all they are wearing they didn't have it that it came from who I'm not hearing you it came from who that was why they did not hesitate they gave that's why in the church the best givers are not the best havers but those who know that whatever they have comes from who I'm not hearing you again come from who very important all boil down to the integrity of God a man that has integrity will not ask you to give me except he has first of all given to you the men that walk with God in the Bible people like Abraham one of the issue of blood talk about different people root and others when they had to go against the natural cause look at the roots look at roots I said this lady I hope this lady is one man listen very carefully your grandfather died I mean your, your father-in-law died your husband died your partner's husband died mother-in-law had a meeting said everybody go back to your people you are still young and then you said no say I'm going back to the village to go, to go and stay there and die say I will follow you the news may have spread that roots want to get married to an old woman she's foolish if Ruth was your sister, your auntie, will you advise her to follow an old woman to go to the village? Will you advise her? No. But, hey, but Ruth said, this thing, this woman, I was not a believer. But through Naomi, I knew the God of Israel. And that God of Israel has integrity. When you follow him by faith, he will never leave you stranded in life. He said, I'm not following this woman. I'm following her God. I know nobody that follow this God will be stranded. Wave your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. When they go to uh, Bethlehem, they will enter. Hey, they say, hey, now me has come. He said, no, don't call me beauty. Call me sorrow. I have life at home against me. That was mass confession. Life was just beginning for her. Today, I speak to you that your life is just beginning. Your life is just beginning. Don't judge your life by what you have suffered. When God is with you because of his integrity, your life is just beginning. Say, my life has just started. Say, my life has just started. Say it again, my life has just started. Tap yourself, say, my life has just started. I cannot be stranded because I am living by God's integrity. You believe it? Shout a believing amen. Shout another amen. Shout another amen. This matter, very soon we shall digest it. It will not finish today. We shall go inside. We shall find out how to live by faith on God's integrity. Say, come over. I'm coming over to my house. Come and take things. Hey, thank God. Thank God. Who called you? Say, my auntie just said I should come over now. I should come with my car that has a big boot. And you had just come from UK to come and take things. You are happy. If your auntie was a 419, say, I've come from UK, come around. Hmm, say, hmm. I know I beg, I can go tomorrow. There's no, there's no need. And when you go there, you will tell all the story of how all he suffered in UK, how cold almost killed her. He will give you a chocolate, that small peppermint. Say, Cut for the children when you get home. I said, I said it before. But there be somebody who you, who has integrity. You say something must, something must do what? Must come out. Then we rise up in prayer. They say struggle in life. You look at where you are. You look as if hope is gone. How do I manage? How do I live my life? Is it how we end my life? Because what God is saying to you to, today, hold on to my integrity. Hold on to my word. Hold on to my character. Oh, my father, this matter, we shall go into it. Living by absolute trust on the confidence on the God that cannot fail. Men trusted in him and their life changed. We read an account of uh, Archbishop that was all the blessed memory. He's still alive, not even blessed memory. He's still alive today. He's not dead. He's alive. 
He went to pray for a young child that died in the community. He prayed and prayed and prayed. The child did not get up. He said, let, let me ask a woman. He said, a, a dog to the back. Because people were in the parlor. They were waiting to laugh at him. So he said, the man of God. He said, there's a door. He said, open it, open it. Went to God. He said, no. But this God does not fail. If God say ask and you ask, he can't fail now. Will he start to learn uh, to be bad because of me? He said, no. God does not fail. God does not fail. Remember the child said, get up. Rise up in the name of Jesus. I give life back to you. Life back to you. The child sneeze. Open eyes, sigh crying. He grabbed the child and get to the parlor. He said, the God of Idahosa has begun and became a crusade. Why did he not run away? He held on to the integrity of God. But in most cases, you say, but it's matter. I don't try now. I don't try. I don't want to kill myself. But when you hold on, that they shall bring forth fruit even in their old age. They will have children. They will get married. So came to me. Said, Daddy, come as finish. Oh, no. And in my age, I come married again. I'm too old. I said, which age? Bible says you married. They say the age you begin and the age you finish. After that, no. He said, you never say. I said, okay. Why are you saying what God did not say? If you want to marry, hold on to him and put yourself in order. And when he comes, it's always right. Holding on to what? His integrity. Others may seem to be ahead. Listen though. Others may appear to be ahead. As you hold on to the integrity of God, you will not only meet them, you will be where? You will overtake and be in the front. That's somebody's portion today. It's not the one that starts that matters. It is the end. Told you of my cousins, they are very much around. Two of them, one married first before the other. And then the first one got married, second one got married. The one, the junior one had the first child, second child. And then she was pregnant with the third child. It was now getting seven years of marriage. I believe she held on. When it was about eight years of marriage, she had quadruplets, three boys and a girl. The one who started having children was still in number three. She was in number four. Once, and that was the end. They are my cousins. She held on. It appears, but, and that, that victory opened up for the family. The mother, if you go to embassy, got the news spread in the U.S., and every member of the family said, we are going to support the quarterback mother to carry baby. Visa was just, ah, the door was open. To today, the door remained open to a family member because of that uh, miracle. But human reasoning is that eh, you don't have done born. So I don't born again. And this one never started at all. God, I, bet, I didn't know you are like this. So no. no, 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 no. Hold on. You may not understand. We don't always understand. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Say what is right. And at the right time, it will show up. Wave your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, I will hold on to your integrity. Anytime, any day. With your hand, just bless him. If you understand the message, just be your mother and bless him. Holding on. Holding on to the integrity of God. Hold on. Hold on to his word. Hold on. We can trust him. We can rely on him. We can depend on him. It is his word. What has God said about the matter? What has God said? What is God saying? What the doctor is saying may not correspond with what you look are looking for. But the word of God, what has God's word says? It is not by your righteousness. It is by his righteousness. It is not by your gift to me. No, no, no. It is what he has given to you. He says you should give. And you, the more you do it, just appreciate him for his word. Tell him thank you for his word. I am enjoying the word of God. I am enjoying the word of God as I speak to you. I am having revelation of the word of God. This is the word of God. Check the word of God is the word of God. Living on the integrity of God's word. Living on. Living by faith on the integrity of the word of God. You cannot be stranded. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. 
he will be there for you does not matter the powers of hell that are gathered against you God is able to disgrace them and give you a testimony and your life will change forever open your mouth and bless the Lord bless him the road may look narrow he will make a way for you you may not have many friends now God will make a way for you just bless his name you may look at Badon before your eyes your friends are getting married they are on, so on social media on Facebook you don't even have a picture of any brother to post don't worry hold on keep yourself depend on him you may have made some mistakes you don't know what to do hold on to his righteousness your righteousness is not what you require even the faith it is his faith all is of the Lord holding on to his integrity God have just started with you by the time God is true with you ah, your story will change forever God looking for a man he wants to use to show that he's a faithful God can he find you a man that can trust him at the darkest night and say Lord I know you are God I know you cannot fail I know you are able to keep me it may look bad, it may look dark now but I can hold on to your integrity and God will always defend his name he will always defend it. So open your mouth and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless him. He is mighty. Holding on to the integrity of God's word. To the character. He cannot fail. He has the power. He knows the right time. Don't give up. Don't accept your bastard. It's okay like this. No. Think of the best. Hold on to the best. Expect the best. Let your faith in him be strong. It's not by your righteousness. It is by his righteousness. When he says give to me, it's not because he wants to inconvenience you. So let's say out of the abundance I have given to you, give bring some. I want to add, I want to create space so that I can put more. And you see the blessings will flow. We think we are smart like little children. Give me biscuits. Give me some. He said, no, 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 no. The parents laugh. At times we are like that. But God can help us to know that we can hold on to his integrity and it will be well with us. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Tell him thank you. His word cannot be broken. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, oh God, not to depend on myself, on my righteousness, on my faith, but on your faith, oh God, on your word. The just shall live by the faith. It's not me, not about me, it's about you. Not about me, it's about you, Lord. I know you can you can bless me beyond measure beyond measure so that I can be a blessing that I can be a blessing that I can be a blessing Father we thank you God wants to heal you He wants to save you you are battling with sin today you are out, tomorrow you are back you want to try your best no, the Lord said come as you are I'm a sinner, this is my problem admit it before God and it will change your story forever. Admit where you are wrong. Maybe you have a demon living in you. Don't hide the demon. Report the demon. And God will expel all of them. The money will come pray for you. And your story will change forever. Oh, Baba, we thank you. Oh, we stand on your word, Lord. I stand on the word of God. The word of God is power. Oh, I stand upon the word of God. I stand upon thy word of God. The word of God is power. Oh, I'm living by thy word of God. Thy word of God is power. Oh, I'm living by thy oh, word of God. Thy word of God. Power. Oh, I'm leaning, leaning on, on thy, thy word of God. God. Thy word ah, of yes, God Lord. is power. I'm 
holding on to thy word of God. Thy word of ah, God is power. Ah, I'm standing by thy word of God. Thy word of God is power. When you say what God's word says and hold on to what God's word says, your victory will come. His God cannot change because of you. His words. God of integrity, he will keep his word. See, when you believe, all things are possible to him that does what? That believe. That, the man said, Dad, I, I'm, I'm, I have unbelief. Oh. He believes he should help my unbelief. This will help, this will help him. Yes. He said, Master, he believe his requirement. Check me, any unbelief in me, take it away. He's my only son. And Jesus intervened. He didn't say, Go home. When you have faith, come. No, no, no. We do not have our own faith. It is his own faith. We just hang on it. And there lies the victory. If you can hold on to this truth, your life will change forever. Lift up your right hand. I believe you have prayed for yourself and to pray for you. Father, thank you for the integrity of your word. I stand on this podium and I declare all who have listened to this word in this auditorium and through the social media who are struggling, who are battling, not knowing what life holds for them. The wind of life is tossing fierce on every side. Lord, I stand and I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus, every raging storm of your life, I say, stop in the name of Jesus. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. All the lies of the devil, all the lies from men, all the lies from yourself. Today I say, be quiet in the name of Jesus. Upon the integrity of the word of God, I declare anywhere your life is restricted and limited, you are loose in the name of Jesus. You are released in the name of Jesus. Whatever you carry that is not of God, today I say, let there be a separation in the name of Jesus. You are healed. You are delivered. You are liberated in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to receive the word of God and live by it is released upon you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the midst of the crooked world, your heart will know no fear. You will depend on the word of God. The Lord will be there for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, your testimony will dazzle your enemies. Peace upon your life. Your going out and your coming in will be blessed. You will not be used as a lamb for sacrifice. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord put his mark upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. The consciousness to know that you are in the palm of God, let it be upon you all the time in the name of Jesus. I command your eyes to be open, your capacity to be open, to receive all that the Lord has planned for you. Every struggle, self-struggle against sin, against unbelief, they are over today in the name of Jesus. You will depend on the faith of God and the righteousness of God. And it will be well with you. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare you are healed. You are liberated. You are blessed beyond measure. Every war or limitation, they are broken in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. Be exalted, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout a believing amen. Put your hand together for Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. You may have your seat. God bless you.